So I've been giving it a test up the motorway and something at the dual carriageway and something's really weird. I've only done 10 miles, um, but this has stopped working and there was a noise coming out of the motor. In the contactor works, the dash works, and it's all still reading 12 volts out of here. So I don't know what's actually happened. The blower's just not stopping whatsoever. Um, I don't know why that's not stopping. So I'm gonna have to pull the fuse out of there and check some stuff. I don't know what went on there, but the 12 volt, the, this, there must be something going on in this switch here because that's all disconnected from there now. Now, there was something going on with the motor when I was driving. Yeah, it's making a noise. I think the brushes have gone, damn. Shoot, it's making a clicky sound. So I guess there's a limit on the RPM on the brushes. It's running, but there's a really weird sound coming out of here, so. Hang on, it's like everything's fused. All the electronics are fused. And I don't think this is working anymore either. I don't know what's going on back there. <sighs> so I've broken another G-Wiz. I don't know what happened with Roger though, because he was doing, he could do 55 to 60 with exactly the same settings. So, um, yeah, I dare not drive it back home. I'm 10 miles away from home on the dual carriageway. Oh, it does sound like this thing's jammed open as well. Don't know what's going on with these electronics. Something's happened and it's damaged the electronics. It's really strange. I don't know what's going on, but something started smoking down here. I can still smell it. Some smoke was coming out somewhere, like some kind of terminal. Something fused, shorted somewhere. So I don't know what it was, but that's still reading okay. The 12 volts reading okay. So I don't actually know what's going on. Whenever I turn the ignition on, something starts smoking. So, I mean, I've got to wait to be picked up, unfortunately. So uh, yeah, we've just got to see if I can get taken back home anytime soon. And then I can have a look and see what's actually going on with this car. Um, I think I've realized what's going on actually. If you have a look closely at that wire, the smoke must have been coming off of that. So I have a feeling that we've shorted. The motor, the motor brushes are probably shorting something. Um, I don't know why that one is turning on, because that's 12 volts, the blower, apart from the heating. So unless it's constantly turning, unless it's just fused somewhere and it's constantly on. Um, but I've taken the fuse out for that anyway. So that's probably why this part is still working, because that's a separate, that's a separate DC to DC connection. So we'll see what's going to happen. I've got to get on. I've got to get under here. Um, I don't think I can see with this, um, but yeah. So I'm pretty sure there's more shorted wires back there, and I'm just going to have to. I'm going to have to pull everything off again. Disconnect all the batteries. Unscrew and unbolt everything. <laughs> get under here. Have a look at that, and get under at the motor. So, just when I thought I had a success. I've had a setback, so it's my fault for taking out on the motorway. Even I mean, it seemed to be running fine, which is why I thought, okay, let's give it a shot. Let's do a few tunes. Um, so unless the brushes were definitely on their way out, or because I pushed it to 60, maybe I pushed it past the RPM for the motor, which is another possibility. I may have pushed it past the RPM, caused a spark, and broke the brushes or something like that. That's possibly what happened. 
So hopefully the commutator is still intact and it just needs a new set of brushes and the insulation is all fine and all that. So that's what I reckon could have happened. Um, otherwise it's a new blooming motor, which is what I was planning to do with the car anyway. I'll let you in on a little secret. I was, I was planning on changing the motor. So uh, maybe that's what's going to have to happen <laughs> instead. A bit earlier than I had expected. So we got the car back safely, thankfully. Um, still baffled at what actually happened because I wasn't really pushing it too hard. Um, I'd only pushed it as much as Roger did with his, and I was looking. And the thing is, I was looking at the uh, stats for the temperature all the time, and it only ever went up to forty on the uh, on the on the reading. So now I don't know if forty means forty degrees. Or if it means something else, but I mean, it wasn't so hot that <clears throat> it wasn't so hot that the uh, that the insulation came out the motor. Now that was when I did really push it too hard. Um, so it's uh, I think what may have happened is that the brushes shorted at high speed or sparked at high speed and took a chunk out the brush, so they started scraping, making a noise on the commutator. So I have a feeling that something shorted along those lines. It's just tricky going to have. It's just tricky being able to get under there in this weather. As you can see, it's just completely soaked. But yeah, I mean, and on the positive side, and always look at the positive side. Thankfully, this didn't happen if I took the trip to Leicester like I was planning to do with the car. If that had happened on the motorway, no, that would have been terrible. So um, thank goodness that it happened on a small road and not a big road. <laughs> um, yeah, and another thing is I noticed a little bit of, I mean, with on the way back it was absolutely pouring with rain. And the other good news is that there's hardly any leaking coming through the car. There's a tiny bit coming in behind the dash, which is through one of the old grommets that's all perished. So that's an easy fix too. Hopefully, and fingers crossed, it's just bad brushes and the commutator's okay and they can be changed. And for the time being, I'll just turn the settings right down so that I'm barely pushing it. Because even though, even though other people have done it to their cars, I just feel like I don't know if I want to risk it now because it's happened to both my G-Wizzers, it's happened to both the DC G-Wizzers and this time I wasn't even setting it too high above what was already been tested by other people and working by other people so I mean it was either faulty brushes or the motor just can't handle 60 miles an hour because um, I did touch 60, I was doing 50 all the way up the dual carriageway no problem coming back we were going down a hill so I thought okay down a hill it won't use much power I was only using 50 amps um, I was only using actually that's right I was only using 50 to 60 amps on the reading on the on the uh, on the laptop so what I think may have happened is that it pushed it past the RPM limit for the motor and that's may that may have been what happened on the motorway as well it didn't actually burn out what had happened is it went past the it went past the RPM limit and damage the brushes so um, yeah that may be the limit on this car is that on the motor so fingers crossed I can get this repaired and uh, and get it back on the road somehow. Now that I have to get in at the dash I've realised how simple I made this um, that just clips over the edge there and these I can actually just pull out these bottom bolts and this whole back end just lifts out and then I can get straight in to the batteries underneath. So I'm pulling that out now, I'm gonna get into the batteries, unbolt them, and then get back into the electronics.
having a look around for any damage but it looks like it's okay I mean I saw some smoking but maybe it was just coming out of that wire there whatever that one whatever that feed is but what I think was happened is that the motor down there had shorted and it was putting the current straight through this and shorting out the red and the black somehow um, we'll see but everything otherwise looks okay like there's a lot of fuses in here and none of them have blown so um, I'm hoping that nothing major has gone I dare not put the fuses into there until I've de disconnected the motor. Saying that I could probably disconnect it right here. That's true. I'll disconnect the motor from here and then I can test everything else and see if there's problems elsewhere. Right, so it looks like we were lucky. Um, I've got the whole dash and that issue with the blower seems to have stopped it's now working as normal so that's not a problem um, the whole uh, 12 volt works now the one thing that has broken is the is this now I don't know if that was because of the um, of the voltage that the motor shorted through the system or if it was for something else because the DC to DC converter this bit is still reading the right voltage coming through here however this thing started smoking earlier I think it was that so I have a feeling that sadly we no longer have any more heated seats that's a shame <laughs> but I guess they didn't do much anyway but although I guess I can pick up one of those units in the future if I really want the heated seats back but uh, yeah I finally got heated seats and I broke it <laughs> um, but I'm sure I can find a way to get that working I've just got to get another module or pull it apart and see what's actually happened to it so um, yeah that's the uh, that's the other thing that needs looking at but that's not a huge deal this just doesn't seem to be switching on the fuse is okay unless there's another fuse somewhere else so I'm not sure what's gone on in there um, but yeah that's the only thing that seems to have been severely affected thankfully could have been worse so everything else seems to be functioning there's no fuses blowing um, the system seems to be working now that I've disconnected the motor from it all so I think it was definitely a motor short we've just got to pull the motor apart at some point and see exactly what happened so I think I'm leaving it there for today. I've um, I've kind of made sure that the car still works, so that's a good sign. Uh, I've just got to, it's just the motor that I have to sort out. So I need to get under here. I need to get under here, pull that, pull that cap off, that uh, tab in the middle, pull that off, have a look at the brushes, see what's going on inside there. Um, but what I think may have happened is it was shorting, because I don't know if that's a 48 volt feed or a 12 volt feed. It must be a 48 but I have a feeling that somewhere along here was shorting and sending voltage through places it shouldn't send it but thankfully there's no insulation coming out of the fan so the motor itself should be salvageable after I can have a proper look at it and see exactly what's going on so it could have been worse so I'm kind of thankful that it isn't and I mean this could have happened on the motorway going to Leicester so I'm grateful that it happened somewhere less less of a problem. So yeah, so thankfully the whole the system saved, everything else works. So I'm just going to um, leave it there for today until I can get and have a look at the motor or see what else I can do with the car. But it's still alive. That's the good thing.